Hi everybody and welcome to Disrupt Ed TV, where every little idea could make potentially a big difference in your classroom or your school. My name is Al Sini. I'm still Joe Asimendi. <laughs> welcome back. Thank you. Thank Real you. pleasure. And uh, with us today, Joe, we've got J.D. Wilson, who is the founder of Lead You, as if right. you couldn't tell from his shirt. Right here. And, uh, you know, we were talking before the program and uh, excited about having you on as a guest. Mm -hmm. Primarily because you do something that's different, as something we haven't talked about before. Mm -hmm. Looks to me like you create educational experiences for students working in conjunction with schools. Is mm -hmm. that right? So that's right. So yeah, the whole idea behind what we do is that we customize school assemblies. Mm -hmm. okay. um, you know, having uh, been a teacher myself and sitting through a lot of assemblies, I got thinking. You know, what can we do a little bit differently that's very interactive and totally engaging for the students? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, if you want to be interacting and if you want to engage, it really helps to do your homework. So I said, let's meet ahead of time with the guidance counselors and the principals, which is mm -hmm. what we do. After we have that preliminary meeting, we say, you know, what's going on in your building? Mm -hmm. And what is the culture like in your building? You know, what approach would work for us? Mm -hmm. So when I come with my team and we end up doing the assembly, you know, what's going to have the best results and true impact um, mm -hmm. instead of the surface level impact? And I think uh, what's really working about the program is that we, we genuinely enjoy what we do. And you can kind of see that and the kids kind of pick up on sure that. The kids well. get all excited. The kids about pick it. up on it. Teachers are familiar with us by the time we get there. Right. And uh, it feels more like a movement uh, rather than just a show. Now, I'm reading a little description that you brought with you. That's right. You start with learning objectives. So the learning objectives could be empowerment or mindfulness. Absolutely. Or anti-bullying, which I think is interesting. Yeah, um, you know, it all, it all comes down to whatever the school district would like or whatever mm -hmm. the principal would like or the guidance counselors. You know, I said, mm -hmm. what is it specifically? And it always surprises us uh, when we get some of these topics. You would think it's always the same thing, but the, they come up with some really unique other topic levels that come up. I mean, there's, there is always mindfulness. Mm -hmm. That seems to be a really big push right now, and it's good because it's real and it works. Mm -hmm. um, but then there's also anti-bullying. You know, we always feel at Lead You, the word bullying has been used so much. Mm -hmm. um, the kids in general also have, they hear this word, they hear it, but let's look beyond the word and maybe focus on kindness. Right. Mm -hmm. Which seems like maybe it's a little simple-minded, but no, kindness, you, everyone, we understand what the bully does and the different types of bullying. Well, what can you do to be an upstander? Let's talk right. about a, a, what a kind person does. Yes. It's kind of like an antidote to bullying, right. if you think about exactly. it. Exactly. So that's interesting. And I think what it is that really works is that instead of just talking about it, um, you know, it's not me just talking or my crew just talking. It's hands-on. They get up, they move around, they work in small groups, and mm -hmm. they learn through experience. And as a teacher, that's what I always felt. I always felt that students learn through experience. And why not do right. that in assemblies? You know, when they get up and they're doing an activity, and then we process it and then we talk about it, mm -hmm. I think that has a bigger, much bigger impact. They're going to remember that moment. Oh, sure. Uh, sure. Be, and it's an experience. Not a, you're not playing a tape for them that they're watching. Exactly. They're involved in exercises and activities that actually Absolutely. teach the lessons. Yes. Yeah. How many kids? Uh, per assembly? Yeah. Oh, man, we've done a lot. Um, we've done, I think the biggest we've done, <laughs> I just did one last week, um, which was for... We had, I think there was 750. Mm, 750 kids, kids in one. in one assembly, which okay. isn't our traditional. What I like to do is uh, break it up, maybe do, because of content. Mm -hmm. do K, maybe if it's, a, if it's a K to eight school, maybe do K to two assembly, then a three to five assembly, okay. and then a six to eight. But we can, we can customize. So if it's 750 kids, we'll make it happen, we'll make it work. We prefer the smaller groups because I think that's how you get the bigger. Oh, for sure, you have for a large sure. group like that. How, what kind of topics did you to, uh, cover? Um, but so th that type of group, we did a lot, a whole lot of bullying, and we did um, mostly just cyber bullying. That was a big topic and responsibility of your cell phone. Um, I will say that all of our, usually all of our assemblies end with a really good like leadership and uh, confidence kind of lesson as well. And instead of again using that word bullying, which keeps coming up, we like to focus on you know. Your cell phones are such a huge responsibility, right. mm -hmm. and we understand that. And your cell phones can be used positively. Mm -hmm. They don't. Okay. It doesn't always have to be something that where it's being used negatively. Mm -hmm. And what are what can you do? Well, what we always say, lead you is you can pause before you post. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know, we love that saying because right. you think before you act. You know, before you put something out there, always know that it's permanent right. and mm -hmm. it stays out there forever. And it's, it's so whatever you put out in a text. Anything you say on social media, it's not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. right. It's going to be in the cloud, it's going to be, you can screenshot it, whatever it is. So cyberbullying was a big one for that big group. Wow, mm -hmm. that's a big one. Yeah. 750 kids. Yes. In, was this an outdoor or an indoor? This was an indoor. Mm -hmm. That was an indoor. So yes. they had a large auditorium, obviously, yes. yeah, 750 a, kids. Really large group. And to manage 750 kids, you need a team. 
Oh yeah. You have a crew. Yes. So uh, the lead you crew. Can, uh -huh. you, can we do entrance music for that? Sure. The lead you crew. Yeah. 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 Uh -huh. yeah. There you go. I wish we could get them all now. <laughs> the baseball cards from that. But uh, uh -huh. the lead you crew, uh, they are one of a kind. They are passionate, mm -hmm. genuine humans. Who right now I have 32 teaching artists. Mm -hmm. Who uh, they come along with me. I don't bring all 32. It just depends on the group. Mm -hmm. So if we have a large group like 750, we have to look at the numbers and bring a whole lot more. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. If it's a smaller group, I can bring you know five or six of the lead U crew. Oh, cool. But the lead U crew, uh, we do training annually. We do uh, semi-annual training as well, where we just kind of we go in and they know how to engage and for lack of a better word, win over yeah. the mm -hmm. students, you know, because we have a very small window of them sitting there saying, am I in or out? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we want okay. that, and they and we get, the lead you crew is great at getting them in. Getting them, okay. grab them, yeah. grab them right, right away in. early on and keep right. them for how long? How long um, is usually it? an hour. If it's a pre-K or kindergarten, I like to tend to okay. 50 minutes because mm -hmm. you start no matter how engaging and passionate you are, I think uh, the attention span, right. you start getting a, a little wander. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I start wandering a little bit, but uh -huh. uh, usually to an hour. Now we also do leadership workshops uh, for high school mm -hmm. and the high school level, uh, sometimes those can go 90 minutes or full day uh, experiences. Again, okay. it depends on whatever the administration is looking for. And I'm guessing you've never done two of these quite alike. They're all different. They're, they are all different. A lot of the uh, similar topics do come up. Um, mm -hmm. So we, you know, we have a bag of tricks basically where we say, okay, you want us to do something on mindfulness? Mm -hmm. Here, how's this? And then they look it over. Oh, that'll work. So okay. we mm -hmm. might use the same activity at other right. schools, mm -hmm. but um, it's all kind of mixed together, almost like eating at a buffet. And your team, you is kind of like we were talking before the program, Mission yeah. Impossible. <laughs> I, I tell <laughs> you what, what the issue is. That's right. And how many kids I've got, and then you look through your headshots until you 100%. find a percent mission teaching impossible. artists. Yes, <laughs> yes. teaching artists. Yeah, that's right. Tell me, I, I've never <laughs> seen that on a business card. No. What yes. is a teaching artist? Teaching artists, so yeah, teaching artists, it's a real thing. Um, uh -huh. A teaching artist to me um, is combining the educational background and the love for the arts. Okay. And, it's somebody, mm -hmm. and it's somebody who also appreciates the art of teaching um, and can kind of say, you know, this isn't, it's no longer, I mean, it's no longer just reading out of a textbook, go answer <coughs> these questions. It's approaching teaching through the lens of an artist, mm -hmm. if that makes a little bit of sense. And mm -hmm. it's also, so for me, it's because it's this in between field. So, the first question that always comes up is like, what credentials do I need to be a teaching artist? And mm -hmm. what are those specific yeah, credentials, you know? And, uh -huh. and this, um, you know, maybe shouldn't, this shouldn't be the thing I'm saying, but like I hire so much, not only on obviously your, your background, but mm -hmm. your, your personality. Sure. And your, when I look into your eyes, and, I, and you guys, I know you're talking about emotional intelligence and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. And when we have that conversation, you know, do you care about what you're about to do? And right. is this something you want to be involved with? And I, we hire based a lot on your passion for empowering students mm -hmm. and empowering kids. Um, it's not necessarily something, and uh, maybe someday you go to school and you'll become a teaching artist degree. And mm -hmm. you know, make, Could be. Yeah, eight year program or something. And, uh, uh -huh. whatever, <laughs> whatever it might end up being. But uh, for me, it's uh, a teaching artist is someone who has a passion for kids and teaches through the arts. That's mm -hmm. great. Um, okay. The Webster Dictionary version, I'm not sure if that's it, but that's, mm -hmm. uh, that's our definition. Works for you. Yeah, absolutely. All ages, any particular yes. age range? So yeah. they're older people, younger people? Yeah, uh, K to 12 is uh -huh. uh, what we've always looked at. Um, you know, we also offer like a summer camp thing mm -hmm. for uh, high school kids. Um, it's just different. I, I have a passion because I taught um, that, you know, that three to five age, uh, mm -hmm. grades three to five. Okay. So it was a passion for that, but um, I'm learning that the K to two experiences, I am so, uh, you know, maybe this is this was on me, but I'm so surprised every time I go to an assembly and we pass around the microphone, what a kindergartner is thinking. You know, oh, sometimes I'm nervous handling, you know, that moment and mm -hmm. you say, okay, what do you think you're giving them? I'm like, I hope he says something right, you know, but uh -huh. I, they usually nine times out of 10, they will say something brilliant. And I just take a moment and I'm just like, Wow, this really? is amazing. I'm learning so much from them, mm -hmm. you know, and we're lear and we're learning as it's all going on. Yeah, uh, that's great. And you so had a teaching background, right? Yes. Yeah, and I also understand you had a military background. Yes, military background. Okay. How did that help you in forming lead you? Great question. Um, so I have to say the military first because uh, that was first. Um, my military background. I did uh, four years. I was in the United States Air Force. Mm -hmm. uh, three, about three of them I was deployed for. I was over in the desert for uh, two deployments okay. uh, during Operation Iraqi Freedom. And at the time, um, if you ask me what is this preparing me for, I, I didn't realize what was happening to myself. Um, mm -hmm. But I was these leadership skills were being instilled right within me, okay. and this respect 
and a lot of things. There's also probably the biggest thing that I gained out of the military, because if you talk to anybody, they will say like, you're, you're in the military? It doesn't mm -hmm. really fit me. Um, but the biggest thing I got out of it was an appreciation for what we have here. Mm -hmm. um, I came out, when I got out of the military, I said, you know, I did, you do a lot of hurry up and wait in the military. You sit around a lot. Mm -hmm. And you know, you might be sitting around in uh, Afghanistan or Iraq, and you, you think a lot. Mm -hmm. And I just remember thinking, you know, like, when I get out, when I get back, you know, I want to do something powerful. Mm -hmm. um, and teaching at that time seemed to be that thing. Mm -hmm. And then when I got out of the military, I said, you know, that's, that might be my thing. And I appreciated having that teaching job so much. I, I taught in Howell, New Jersey. Mm -hmm. um, I taught uh, fourth grade and I taught fifth grade. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Great. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's great. Uh, such a great experience. And in teaching, I think, uh, you know, talk about what skills I got out of that. I just, that's when I really, being in front of kids every day and having that experience really just took me to a different place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And as a teacher, I really started to totally realize, you know, how important this role is in front of students. And mm -hmm. like, how can I use that? And how can I teach them some of those bigger life lessons? Yeah. Um, and as a teacher, I enjoyed the entire ride. Mm -hmm. I, I worked, listen, I worked in one of the best districts in the state, hands down. Mm -hmm. I worked with some of the most amazing professionals, people I still consider my friends, 100%. Mm -hmm. And the students were unreal. Mm -hmm. I, I still, I miss them, you know? I think back on them all the time. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I walked away from that, really knowing, you know, that's how important it was for me to try to create something new hmm. and to try to teach these bigger life lessons. Yeah. So, I mean, I had a really, really great, great experience both in the military and in teaching. I want to kind of take those and create Lead You. Yeah, it's funny. As you were talking, I was thinking, uh, most people misunderstand the military, thinking leadership in the military is about command and control, but right. it really isn't. It's about inspiring, persuading, uh, absolutely. and collaborating. Absolutely. So, so when you teach leadership to high school students, and that's one of your programs, yes. I guess, right? What, what, what kind of skills do you focus on? Communication, mm -hmm. um, especially in this day and age, you mm -hmm. know, uh, looking away from the phone and really listening to the, what your friends are saying. We, we do a thing where um, we kind of, we have them in a small group, really having engaging conversations about like, you know, we'll give them a topic and like having, just to have a simple conversation to have that level mm -hmm. of communication, I think that is such a huge part of mm -hmm. being a teenager right now. Sure. And are you really tuned in? And are you really listening to what somebody around you is saying mm -hmm. and receiving what they're saying? Not just waiting for your next opportunity to talk right. uh, great. and really kind of take in what's happening. Yeah. Uh, the good thing for people who are watching to understand about this is yes. you do this for groups of 30 or 40 or more right. high school students. Absolutely. And, and um, so it's not a one-on-one -on -one kind of a teaching experience. It's no. a high school that wants to create an event like this would call you Absolutely, yeah, you reach out to us, we'd set up a preliminary meeting, uh -huh. uh, and then we'd have that meeting and we'd look at the numbers and we'd say, all right, well, what can we do that would really have a big impact on your school? Not only that, mm -hmm. what just, you know, things happen very quickly. I always said when I started the company, this was kind of like a tagline, mm -hmm. and then I started living the tagline. And it was basically, you know, every school is different. Mm -hmm. You know, it has a different culture, it has mm -hmm. a different set of leadership, a different style, if you will. Right. Uh -huh. And I always said that, and now that I've had the opportunity to do this for like the last year and a half, I'm starting to actually see, you know, that's so true. You know, we're in the same township. Mm -hmm. The school's right across the street from each other. So different. Right. You know, really just different, different yeah, styles, different... Different uh, buildings. Just uh -huh. completely different buildings, you know. It's all about culture and a vibe that they create in there. And kind of picking up on that as an outsider coming in, you know, what can we do to embrace your culture to embrace the vibe That's that you have in school. Such, such a good point. So you don't go in and reinvent the school by any means. No way. You yeah. learn enough about the school to be able to represent the school's culture Absolutely. in an event that you create for their right. students. Absolutely. A lot of times schools will say, you know, we're rolling out in the beginning of the year, we're rolling out a new uh, behavior program or mm -hmm. a new leadership program, mm -hmm. uh, a new character education program, whatever it might be. Can you be part of this? Mm -hmm. So I say, yeah, what's the program? We put a slide up there in the show and we say, hey, we know here at Disrupt Ed Elementary School that you are doing this new program called Character Counts. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's great that you're doing this program. And then we base all of our language is based around that program. Mm -hmm. So we kind of, we infuse that language into the program, which helps reinforce whatever the school objectives right. are. Yeah. Now you've gotten, you uh, wrote down a couple of other organizations you've worked with, not just yes. schools you've done work with, Great Adventure, which is a large amusement park. Yes, very excited. Talk about that. Very okay. excited to announce we have a, a new partnership with Great Adventure. Great. Okay. Um, and it's so Great Adventure does a tremendous amount of work with schools in New Jersey, and they have a lot of different days where the students okay. come in, 
and they added, they will sit through leadership assemblies, anti-bullying work, whatever it might be. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of a lot of students and parents maybe don't even, aren't aware of that, but they mm -hmm. really they shut down the park for a little bit, and then they open it up later for the kids to really enjoy the park and mm -hmm. also get a little bit of character education in there. Okay. So our role in that is uh, they graciously brought us on as a partner where they want us to help design and customize programs for when they have these big events and these yeah. big days. And our first one is coming up on uh, May 23rd. It's going to be, uh, it's funny. I, so I had a conversation, <laughs> that Great Adventure called me, and uh, mm -hmm. you know, as a kid living in New Jersey, Great Adventure was, that was my Disney. Right, you know? exactly. I, yeah, yeah, I was there all the time. Mm -hmm. And when Great Adventure called me, at first of all, I was geeking out a little bit. I was talking right. to them. I'm like, oh, this is great. Like, yeah. you know, like, can we ride the Batman ride? I was very excited. And they said, <laughs> they said, yeah, you know, we really want you to do some anti-bullying work with uh, the students that are coming in. Mm -hmm. um, there's going to be over 10,000 students coming for Safety Patrol Day. Mm -hmm. And they said, you know, is there anything uh, you can do? And they, they said, you know, we were thinking that maybe you could design a scavenger hunt in the park. Mm -hmm. And... Now, for a moment, I didn't say anything. I was just like, all right, so you're telling me that you are giving me the keys to Great Adventure to design this guy? <laughs> right, right, right. I was like, yeah, like, they said, yeah, yeah like, we are. Absolutely. Right. I said, yeah. I, said, oh, okay. I was like, yeah. I was like, sign us up, you know? Yeah, yeah. So uh, we uh -huh. got together as a team. We designed the scavenger hunt where the kids walk in. They're going to meet us at the fountain and they're going to be going through the park. And at each station, they're going to be getting a little taste of Lead You, which is okay. maybe one of our strategies or one of our, one of our games, essentially, that they're going to be playing that helps them not only feel empowered, learn a little bit about leadership, and learn a little bit about mindfulness at each station. At each and station. And then they get a stamp in their book and, you mm. know, scavenger wow. hunt, so they'll be going all around the park. So these are dry, boring experiences, obviously. <laughs> uh, yeah, very, it's very. Uh, pretty, obvious, pretty obvious to me that they're the opposite of that. Yes. And there's a certain physicality involved in it, too. I mean, the kids absolutely. move around. They don't just sit there. Absolutely. And you know. uh, that's a big part of it. Yeah, absolutely. Like we were saying, I mean, kids learn through experience. Mm -hmm. um, and... So having them get up, move around, and experience something, they're going to eventually, that'll stick with them. That moment in time will stick mm -hmm. with them. And as a teacher, I always thought that, and I think that's why we designed the programs. You know, they want to get up. Sure. You know, I sure. wanted to get up, you know, yeah. and like sometimes mm -hmm. I'd be sitting there just, and they're just itching to get up, and that's, and to give them a little, understand that about them. I think, you know, in the state, and definitely in the country now, with mindfulness and the big push that's happening, right. I think that's, everyone is realizing that. And mm -hmm. uh, there's so many programs out there you know, especially things that teachers are doing in their classroom that recognize that, you know, they need to get up, they need right. a stretch break. You know, when I was in school, it was just, you were glued to that seat yeah, right. for, for the same oh, yeah. for you. So oh, yeah. getting them up, moving around is, that's crucial. That's a big deal. Absolutely. And you, you mentioned also you have a partnership with Atkins, Atkins, Meridian Health. So yes, uh, speaking about mindfulness, um, I, I luckily ended up uh, running into um, one of the community outreach individuals for Hackensack Meridian Health, um, mm -hmm. Lisa, and she, she said, you know, we're doing a lot with mindfulness. And I, you know, starting the company mm -hmm. is something that my staff will hear me say all the time. You know, I don't have all the answers. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm still, I'm constantly learning, you know. Mm -hmm. and, that's, and so I said, you know, we would love to sit down with some of the health experts and sure. some of the experts who not only know about mindfulness, but they know about healthy habits mm -hmm. for, you know, eating habits, sure. healthy things right. you're doing inside and outside of school. We sat down with them and we actually ran a workshop with them uh, up here in Red Bank and mm -hmm. they learned a little bit about what we do and then we learned a little bit from them as well and they said, you know, this makes a lot of sense, you know, mm -hmm. not only they're giving us that proper educational background, right. it, but then we are able to deliver it in a engaging, in interactive engaging and fun it. way. So, yeah. you know, it's not as just a PowerPoint. Right. So, I mean, the synergy there is really, we're looking forward to seeing how this yeah, continues. Where do you see exciting. the company going from now here? Great question. Um, so my vision right now is I want to make sure that we continue to have a solid product in New Jersey, especially. I want to mm -hmm. make sure that every school we go to, which I can, I can honestly say is happening, whenever we go to the school, they always say, you know, we'll be in touch and they'll, they'll welcome us back. And mm -hmm. we'll, and they always say, that was amazing. I love the look on not only teachers' faces, the kids, though. I mean, they come up and hug us afterwards. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's very... Oh, yeah, they have a great time. They really do. And so um, for that, um, I don't want... Sometimes when a company grows too fast, mm -hmm. um, the product gets um, lost in there. Diluted, mm -hmm. absolutely. Right. And um, so my main focus is making sure that as we grow, the product stays consistent and the training uh, for my other staff members continues to grow. Um, I think that's where we're headed as a company is... Now, we're, right now, we've done 121 schools in New Jersey. Mm -hmm. uh, in a year in and a half. In a year and a half. Fantastic. Which is great. Considering the first like three months of that year and a half, mm -hmm. uh, the, the phone didn't ring because no one knew what it was. Right. They're, they're like, the guy with the whale called, you know? Like, right. what the, <laughs> 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 yeah, they're asking. Um, so, um, 
So for right now, just continuing to have that consistent product. Uh, luckily, getting you know opportunities like today and getting our brand out there mm-hmm. and within, within the community hopefully gets the word out so we can continue to be successful as we go to these schools. Yes. Um, ultimately, yeah, we would like to continue to grow right. and grow throughout the country and um, you know hopefully franchise and keep the training to ensure the product yeah, that's is terrific. growing as well. How did you get that logo? Uh, the whale. Logo? All right. Um, so. <laughs> So everyone always asks, how, what's the deal with the whale? Right, sure. It's mm. the number one question, and we kind of usually keep it a mystery. So we'll turn the cameras off for okay. this part now. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Whale Tank, where school assembly programs pitch their ideas to extremely rich investors to see if they will book them for the 2017 school year. Today, we have the Lead You crew, fronted by veteran and former grade school teacher, J.D. Wilson. Let's see what happens when they jump into the Whale Tank. Hello Whales, my name is JD, and today I am seeking your time and energy to invest into us, the Lead U Crew. You might be asking yourself, what makes our school assembly company different than all the other ones? Well, the answer to that is as easy as one, two, three. One. We know that every school building is different, so we customize our assemblies to make sure it meets the need of your unique building. Two. We believe in small group based activities, so when your students enter our assemblies, we break them up into teams and have them compete. Three. We roll deep. The Lead U Crew brings six to ten teaching artists to ensure that every student has an empowering and individualized experience. So Wales, that's what makes Lead U truly a worthy investment. Hold on. Are you saying that the kids are going to be moving around? Absolutely. Working in small groups? Yes. And participating in competitions? Yes. So we don't have to just sit there the whole time? No. What's the deal with the whales? Next question. What do you think about apples? Love the phone, love the fruit. Could do without the sauce. Are your assemblies peanut free? And gluten free. Pork or tail or ham? Bacon. Your facial hair seems aggressive. Anything we can do about that? Christina? I'll shave. So we get to compete in a lot of competitions? Yes. yes. Is soup a food or a drink? Food or drink, people. Food or drink. A chunky drink. This is a waste of time. I'm out. Do you like cheesesteaks? Only from Philly. I'm out too. I'm out. Uh, yeah, JD, I'm out too. Mom? Just business. Okay. I'm probably out, but one last question. Is it fun? Yes. How much fun? teaching uh, my girlfriend and I she said uh, you know I think we need to get away and you need to think about this company and what you're going to do mm-hmm. so uh, we took a trip to California mm-hmm. um, we drove uh, the entire West Coast you know Big Sur and right. all throughout Pacific there mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. We did the whole Pacific Coast Highway and it was like a 12-day journey out yeah. there mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it was like something out of a movie where I was we were sitting down on the cliff and I just we saw these whales breaching Mm -hmm. and I said, you know, like instead I know that like this moment is awesome. I've always been fascinated by whales. Mm -hmm. There are these, just these big, peaceful, humble creatures that are out there and, and they're at, and I just had this moment where I said, you know, I need a symbol Mm -hmm. and I I feel like it should be 
the whale and uh and everyone around me at the time was just like absolutely you know mm. let's go with this so oh, great. that's where it came from okay that uh, makes sense yeah and it just felt right in the moment um like i said and uh I had somebody locally design design mm. this for me, a friend of mine. Okay. She did a great job. So a school that's out there that wants to hire you for yes. an event. I mean, the, the cool thing about this is it's, um, what you do is you take a learning objective like mindfulness right. and you kidify it yes. in a way that's and true. you integrate it with the school so that it feels like it's part of the school and not something that sort of hangs off to the side. Absolutely. Uh, and it's affordable. I mean, you, we talked a little bit yes. about the program. It's uh, uh, schools that are considering this ought to call you to get a quote. Absolutely, yeah. We will customize a quote based on the numbers and based on what they're looking for. Mm -hmm. And I mean, yes, uh, everyone, especially my family, my girlfriend, will tell you it's very affordable. It's very right. right. okay. affordable. <laughs> uh -huh. But you know, I, I want to get the the mission out there and the vision out there. And um, you know, in order to do that, I understand that schools are working with whatever they have. So How many schools? Did, I'm sorry. Yeah. How many schools ask to put to have that? Great shirt you have on and put it in the program. Oh, they always want it. Yeah, we will bring some with us. Absolutely. Okay, and we have sure. stickers too that we give the kids. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. yeah, and the, yeah. the stickers out yeah. there as well, uh, which always helps. Yeah. We're at that part of our yeah. program where you get to tell everybody how to reach you. So oh, okay, great. Into the, program, uh, into the camera, JD. Hi, Hi Earth. Um, JD Wilson here with Lead You. Um, would love to hear from you. Please reach out. Um, our website is www.leadyouthere. That's L-E-A-D, the letter U, T-H-E-R-E dot -E com. Leadyouthere.com. Uh, reach out on our submission page, and then we will be in touch within 24 hours. Uh, you can also check us out on Instagram, at leadyou underscore, um, and you can also see us on Twitter as well. Uh, that's at lead underscore you underscore, or Facebook. We are out there. If you need us, we are definitely here waiting for you. Great. Good. Jamie right. Wilson, uh, what a hey, pleasure thank you so much. Much. I appreciate pleasure meeting you. Oh, this was great. And by the way, thank you for your service. Oh, uh, absolutely. Thank you, no. thank you gentlemen. And uh, my name is Al Sini. I'm still Joe Osamendi. And this has been another terrific episode of Disrupt Ed TV with a terrific guest. Mm -hmm. We hope you'll join us again for a future episode. Thank you. Yeah. All right.